I love fishing in the springtime. It, it's funny how fast things change. I just put the boat in the water on this particular body water. Started off with a crankbait. I was thinking the water would be kind of in that low to mid 50 range. Fished for a little bit and honestly didn't get any bites. Looked down at my helixes and realized that, hey, this water's a lot warmer than what I was thinking. And I'm saying a lot because instead of 53 or four, it was 58. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but to a bass in the springtime, that three or four or five degree water temperature difference is huge. It completely changes their mood. I really start transitioning to think actual spawning, you know, the fish right up there where they're gonna spawn. When that happens, it's time to lay a lot of those hard baits down. The best way for me to start catching those fish, numbers and size, is going to a weightless technique with a soft plastic bait. Oh, that's a big girl right there. <laughs> For me, I mean, something that I'm I'm so very fond of is a wacky worm. I mean, I don't know how many big fish that I have caught over the years on a wacky worm, how much money I've won with it in tournaments, but it would be a lot. A wacky worm in clear water, dude, is so hard to beat, especially if you know those fish are shallow. This is like pre-spawn. This water's upper 50s. These fish are not, not quite to the point of spawning just yet. Come here, big girl. Oh, open your mouth. <laughs> look at the, man, look at that fish, dude. So gorgeous and healthy. What a specimen. My goodness, that fish is so pretty. She's got that wacky worm, that red line right in the roof of her mouth, exactly where you want to get them. The wacky sticko on a crossover ring. I'm going to get her unhooked. Right, there we go. That's the setup. Man, that is just dynamite. Wacky rigging setup right there. Look at that fish, dude, that is a beauty. My goodness, what a big old tank. Sooner Run is my favorite color if the water is fairly clear. And I've got that rigged with one of those VMC crossover rings. But this is the new Redline Weedless Nico hook is what this is. Actually, that there's one. But I wanna be looking in the water, literally looking for the next target or looking for the next fish. That's a big one, that fish was out. There's a, a, I could see a little piece of wood out here on this point. Just an incredibly slick hook. It works really, really well. It's got that coating on it that, you know, really, in my opinion, helps slide that hook into those fish's mouth. Oh my goodness. Oh, dude. <laughs> Come on, don't even, don't sling my worm off, buddy. Let me get a hold of you. <laughs> I just pulled it, pulled it right out there on that point, dude. And it, it sank a couple feet before that fish eased up. I didn't see it. I was just threw up ahead of the boat, letting it sink. And, uh, you know, just while I was looking and ease up and I feel a little tick. And there the fish goes, what a big old giant. My goodness. Dude, that's a crazy fish. Wow. Off she goes. Man, it's just a it's just a ball because it's such a fun time of the year when those fish are really getting up their shallow. It becomes such a visual game. A big thing that I'm always trying to pay attention to, you know, as, as I'm looking in the water and stuff, looking at the color of the bottom. That's such a big deal. Um, you know, whether you're trying to just find a clean place, or if you're looking to to actually find, you know, what truly is a bed or something, just trying to find those places where the bottom color is a little bit different. You know, pre-spawn fishing, I think of a lot of that being, you know, with your electronics, you're looking for those fish in those places where they're staging. Once you get to this time of the year, it's usually a visual deal. Your sunglasses are one of the most important things you can have. With a wacky worm, my typical cast, you know, I'm gonna throw it out by whatever target it is that I, that I see out there, you know, where I'm thinking a fish may be. And I'm gonna allow that bait to fall on a totally slack line long enough to where I think it's gonna be on the bottom or really, really close to the bottom. And then I'm gonna kind of bounce that slack. I want that, I don't wanna pull the worm, okay? You know, I wanna keep in mind that I, I'm not really wanting to pull the worm with the rod tip. I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to bounce it because it's, it's not a technique that I'm so concerned with throwing out and fishing all the way back to the boat. It's about fishing those specific targets, you know, wherever I'm throwing it next to. It's not a, it's a slow technique, man. It's not something that you're gonna, you know, cover a bunch of water with. That's why it's so target oriented and why to me, the, my sunglasses are so important when I am fishing a wacky worm. So yeah, throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, slack line. And that's truthfully when a lot of your bites are gonna come. 
a big key with that. That's why I use a yellow braid. That's something that allows me with that semi-slack line, I'm gonna watch that line from time to time and see that line jump. But always, always, always braided line with a fluorocarbon leader is my go-to setup. 10 pound braid, 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Man, I just have so much success with that. There's no way else that I would ever fish a wacky rig. Oh, he bit it. He's got it. That was so cool. I just dropped the talons right here on this little point and looked down. There's a giant was swimming across through there, just dropped that wacky worm down and she ate it. In the corner of the jaw. <laughs> These fish are just absolutely insane, dude. Right in the corner. I watched her just ease up to it and just go, just suck it in. Look at that. Dude, these fish are built, man. What a giant. Just bursting. Every one of them are just so full of eggs. Almost, I mean, they are just about ready to spawn. Big old pretty things. <laughs> yeah. One bait style is that wacky rig. The other one, and something for the particular situation that I'm dealing with here, you can see some of the moss and grass and stuff in the background. Very similar setup here. What I've got is a five inch Bass Pro Sticko worm rigged on that VMC Redline hybrid wide gap hook. And the benefit with going with the straight rigged stick worm versus the wacky worm is when you get in these places where there's a lot of moss and a lot of grass and stuff, it's gonna slide through some of that cover a little bit easier. Still gonna have the fall that that weightless worm has, but it's actually gonna come through some of that cover a little bit easier where that wacky worm wants to grab onto the moss and grab onto the, some of the grass sometimes and can mess that presentation up. Man, I love to fish stuff weightless. It's such a, such a fun way to fish. You can skip it undercover really well, and, uh, and you can catch a lot of those fish that you'll start seeing up there cruising around shallow that just really won't bite much else. <laughs> Look at that one. Golly. I'm talking about thick from head to tail. Weightless is the way to go when you're starting to see that happen early in the, in the spawning time of year when those fish are just getting up there, getting started on those beds. That fish is well over seven. What a day. What a day, what a day.